Good evening. For the past few months, we've been exploring the subconscious mind and how people can help themselves with training through hypnosis. Louis P. Bauer is a clinical hypnotherapist, and the title of this program is The Healing Power of the Mind. Our guest tonight is Claire Burke, and after a few minutes, she's going to share with us her story on hypno hypnosis. Well, Louis, here we are again. Well, I'm really happy to be back here again. And you know, Linda, you had asked me a while back about uh, maybe having some people come on the program and, and share some of the stories and some of the miraculous things that happen in their life. Uh, and I was a little bit reluctant about that because, you know, what goes on in the office really is strictly confidential. And, and even to approach a person, you know, and say, well, would you want to come on camera? Uh, I felt that being very, out, you know, out of place with that. But it was no more than two days later after you mentioned that to me. I was at a uh, at a meeting one night, uh, and uh, this gentleman came up to me and he said, uh, "I don't know if you remember me," he said, "but I came to you five years ago, uh, and I quit smoking." But he said, "You got a minute?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, uh, let me just tell you some of the other things, you know, that happened that day uh, when I had that session with you." Uh, and he started telling me about that. And that was David, who we saw last month give his testimony. Um, it was about a day later. I was in the bank making a deposit, and um, a lady came up to me, and she said, uh, oh, Dr. Bowie, she said, it's been a year now, and I, you know, I hadn't had a cigarette since. She said, but let me tell you what else, would ha uh, what else happened. Uh, and she proceeded in telling me some of the spiritual things that she got from that session. So I asked her, I said, well, would you want to share that on camera? And, and uh, she said, yes, I'd love to. And they weren't reluctant at all. No, as a matter of fact, uh, they were excited about sharing uh, the things that they received. In fact, um, I saw Claire, who was our, my guest here today, mm -hmm. and um, I was mentioning to Claire some of the things that we were doing uh, on the station. And uh, Claire attended one of my seminars and workshops. So I think it was a two-day, was it a two-day? weekend workshop. weekend yes. workshop. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was, uh, I think it was a Sunday afternoon or something, I asked for a volunteer because I was going to go through a stop smoking section and show, you know, the people that were in the class, you know, how I work with clients for stop smoking. And Claire immediately jumped up and said she wanted to <laughs> be the volunteer for that. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't know, I, you know, I, I knew something happened that, that, that evening, but I really didn't really know what it was. And then I started talking to Claire, and she started telling me some of the things that happened that day. So uh, I said, Claire, would you want to share that on camera? And Claire said, I'd love to. Definitely. So, that's what brought us here today. That's great. Well, everybody that we've talked to, that I've talked to, that's had an experience with the hypnosis has really talked about something else that happened to them. That It was a much deeper, more spiritual thing that's happened to everybody. It seems to be the theme from everyone that I've talked to. Well, you know, like I said before, Linda, I may do hypnosis a little bit different than mm -hmm. maybe most of the other clinical hypnotherapists do it. But this is the only way, you know, I know how. I, I didn't get into this profession uh, because I wanted to. I really know that I was led into this. Uh, that hypnosis uh, was, was only the tool that I needed um, to help that person uh, to get in touch with that part of themselves. And I think that's the exciting thing with Claire has to share today about how she tapped into that source of supply. Um, again, I just really have to, you know, I, what Jesus said when he said the kingdom of God is within us, if we just listen to that a moment and, 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 and meditate on that a little bit, uh, we can see where the answers are to our questions, uh, where the peaceful solution is to our problems, and where our true happiness and our true peace abides. And, and Claire is a good example, I think, of sharing that today, which she experienced. 
Well, Claire, when you said you raised your hand and you were so <laughs> eager to volunteer, yeah, I've been to, uh, to meetings where uh, Louis was talking and he could he had a hard time getting volunteers because it's sometimes not hard but difficult for people to just jump up and, yeah. and run. There must have, you must have been at a place in your life at that time that something touched you, that you just knew that was the right thing to do. Definitely. Um, I had seen Louis speak before and there was a uh, an energy about him, a presence about him, that I felt that his intent was pure. Um, I heard what he told people, how he handled himself, uh, watch how he uh, treated his wife. Um, and everything that I saw made me feel comfortable with trusting him to hypnotize me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted some of what he had. I didn't quite know what it was, but I wanted it. Some of that energy. Some of that energy. There's a, a, a peacefulness about it or a, uh, uh, a pureness about it. I don't know how to explain it. It's something you just feel from someone. And uh, so if there was an opportunity for me to get up there and um, have him work with me, I was willing to push people out of the way to get there. <laughs> uh, I went there That's with great. the intent of uh, mm -hmm. being hypnotized by Lily. Well, you know, after uh, I just mentioned about, you know, that later on this afternoon I'm going to ask for a volunteer. So any of you out there that may be smokers, if you want to volunteer for it, you know, just let me know. And, you know, and then we broke for about a 15-minute break. And uh, she just come up to me just excited like a little child, you know. It says, I want to, I want to volunteer. I want to be it. And, and the excitement <laughs> with her, you know, the, the vibrant part of her, you know. It was, it was just like a child, well, you, know, you know, that, know. That's something that just crossed my mind. The, the, uh, that uh, characteristic is, was with David, yes. Yoko. They had that brightness and that uh, energy and effervescence, if you will, about them. And they're just so happy. Happiness, I think, is how I would describe yeah. it. Well, you know, Somewhere Jesus said, you know, unless you're like a child, you'll not gain the kingdom of heaven. And that's what she was. She was like a child. She was, just, I'll do it, I'll do it. You know, like somebody saying, mommy, mommy, I'll do it, I'll do it. I think that desire, too, you know, we talk about the innocence of the child. Um, you know, I'm far from being a child as far as the age goes, but at the same time, it, it was more of a desperation. So many things in life that you have tried, trying to get that innocence that peacefulness as a child and it just didn't work mm -hmm. and so as life goes on you seem to lose some of that essence mm -hmm. a little here a little there and i think the the main drive is wanting to get that back so desperately um mm -hmm. more than the who i wanted i want it was like no man i need it i need it yeah. um it's a part of you if you lose it, it it's you just lose a part of your soul mm -hmm. yeah that's true that's true. You lose who you really are. Um, I think that's, a, with a lot of people today, <clears throat> they're searching for things outside of themselves. You know, the, you know, when people come and say, you know, I want to quit smoking, I've tried Nicorette gum, staples in the ear, acupuncture, <laughs> the patches, you know, none of it works. Why would this work? It's because they were trying those things outside of themselves. They were looking mm -hmm. to get something mm -hmm. else to do it for them uh, instead of going within. And, and, and that's, where it, you know, that's where it all takes place. Uh, so you said you, you were not afraid to be hypnotized. You were eager. Were you yes. sure that you were going to be able to? to mm -hmm. I mean, you just had a... Well, Louis had explained uh, hypnosis to where it was a state of relaxation um, and it was not threatening. Uh, that you wasn't would be. Entertainment. Well, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> right, it wasn't. I wasn't going to quack yeah. like a duck. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and um, I would be aware mm -hmm. of everything that was being said. If I if I didn't want to respond, I didn't have to. If I wanted to, um, if I wanted to just quit, then you know I had that option too, and he'd count yes. count me back up. Mm -hmm. So it just wasn't a threat. If anything, the aspect of being able to be still. <laughs> Huh? and relax mm -hmm. and let the mind slow down, uh, that was a wonderful invitation. Mm -hmm. It was like, please get me there. 
uh, and let's see what happens. So, so what happened? I wasn't threatened at all. So tell us what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was is um, I had a spiritual experience. Uh, I found myself. And that is the sum total of what took place. I'll describe what happened to me then, and maybe later on we can talk about what I realized really took place. But at the moment, uh, there was a peacefulness. When the mind stopped spinning and thinking about what do I have to do later on and, and what happened yesterday, there was just this calmness. I've never felt such serenity and warmth. And I accepted myself. It was a feeling of being totally non judgmental and having compassion. I felt this enormous compassion, um, a love. And it was overwhelming to where I could feel emotions starting to come up. And I just let them happen. Didn't uh, and just watched it, uh, felt it more or less, um, and not got involved. Didn't get involved in trying to say, "Oh well, I'm feeling sad now, and where is that coming from?" Just let it happen. I was calm enough where it could just happen, and I realized that I was loving myself and accepting myself without any judgments, and I had the spark to live. There was an I left there with an excitement about tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, it was just energy all through my body um, that something wonderful was going to happen in my life. I didn't know what, but I knew something would. Um, and that, that's what I left there with. It was a feeling of peace. It was almost as if um, a blanket was placed over me. Um, where I felt secure and safe and non-threatened and it was the first time in my life that I could just be and so for whatever time it was that I was in trance um, I was just being and uh, that was quite a, um, a wonderful gift uh, for me um, in my life it seems like I've always performed. I came from um, an abusive family. And so to feel that safe and to stop spinning long enough to just be with myself and really, for the first time, feel who I was was a new experience. Did you know what was going on, Dr. Bauer, at the time? I knew something was going on. I could feel and sense Everybody that. Everybody did. Yeah, and everyone in that, in that workshop knew it. Uh, nobody could place their hands and say, oh, I know what happened, but they knew it. Uh, it was just like it just, it surrounded the whole mm -hmm. area there. Um, you know, to explain it, uh, I can't, but it was like a part of me that knew uh, that there was something else going on, and it, it, was, it was the furthest thing away from stop smoking. <laughs> but, Oh, that's yeah. what really happens yeah. here. But Everybody. that's what I needed then. Um, I think that's sometimes you go with the intent that, oh, well, I'll stop smoking, I'll do this, I'll do that. But there's so many underlining issues as to, well, why do I smoke? You know, mm -hmm. the, there's many reasons. Uh, and I think that the number one thing that I needed then was that self love of, of feeling okay and not needing anything out here to make me feel that way. It was an incredible experience. There aren't words to really describe it. I, she speak about it, and just to, you know, last night I did a benefit for a boy that has the came in, and, and uh, they, I asked for a volunteer to come out of the audience. And um, again, you like you say, you know, nobody wants to volunteer. But the lady was just looking at me, and she, you know, she just stood up and she said, well, okay, I guess I'll be the one since you're looking at me. And uh, she came up and uh, she sat on a chair in front of all of the people out in the audience. And, um, you know, I told her that hypnosis is just guiding a person with suggestions. Uh, they have the uh, choice whether they want to accept the suggestion or reject it. I said, but tonight I want to show you how a person can go into that pleasant 
altered state without any verbal suggestion, just with nonverbal. And uh, so I did the demonstration, and she went into a very deep, pleasant state. Um, when she was there, I was talking to the audience, telling them, you know, that she knew everybody was looking at her, but it just, you know, it didn't matter. And uh, then when I counted her out, you know, she, I mean, she took like a sigh of relief, and she said, uh, can I just explain to the audience what I experienced? And I said, sure. And she said, it was like uh, I was here, but I wasn't here. You know, she said, uh, it was like I could feel my heart and blood circulating through my body. And she said, there was a warmth that came over me. And she said, such a peace and serenity. And, uh, and it may have only been two minutes, probably, that we, you know, we did that demonstration. And I told her, I said, you know, this is something that you can do yourself, you know, that uh, because all of hypnosis is self-hypnosis, you can bring yourself back to that very pleasant state. And I said, just close your eyes and do that. And she did. And when she did it the second time herself, she really got in touch with a lot of issues that she was able to to solve right there in front of all that audience in her own mind. And she came to me after and told me, you know, how she was uh, so glad that she came and that she volunteered for that. So, you know, it's like uh, David and Yoko and Claire and so many other people that come. Uh, I, I feel God puts people in front of us uh, when we need to be at a certain place. And, uh, and I myself have that same experience. I'll go somewhere and somebody will oh, just be hot. there. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to go into a little bit more depth about what happened with Claire and her experience and how it has affected her life. Good. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with the healing power of the mind. Commerce and Love Communications Company. Our guest today on The Healing Power of the Mind is Claire Burke. We've been talking with Claire about an experience that she had when she underwent hypnosis with Louis Bauer. And uh, it's kind of a, a theme that's run through all of the testimonials that we've done, Claire, is that people have gone to Louis for hypnosis for something to either lose weight or to fight depression. But what takes place in that session is uh, so much more than that. And that's been the theme here, and that's what happened to you, too. And as we talk a little bit more about what has happened since that time, and did you quit smoking? Well, yes. <laughs> I'm a non-smoker now. Good. Um, but there were times that I did go back, and it, it upset me, but I didn't have... Uh, I found out why as time went on, as time went on. But I left there knowing that my life was going to change. I also left there knowing that the um, I had a different perspective. Um, I started seeing things differently. It wasn't uh, the view any longer of, oh gosh, you know, I was an abused child, and, and it seems like things are always hard for me to get to. And, and I started looking at things as to, yeah, I was, but look what I learned. And everything became a lesson to me. And this was really unique for me uh, because I actually, I stopped reacting to the world around me and, you know, my family, my friends. And um, I realized that I was not my emotions and that I could control those. I could experience it or not experience it. It was like a cloud passing by. And uh, that I could create my own life. And that was very powerful. Um, and so with that, every day was a new lesson. And, uh, and there were all lessons of compassion and forgiveness um, with myself and with others. I, what I left behind me there was a lot of anger and hardship. And I went home and started to understand why things had taken place. And I felt that in my heart, the life I had was for a purpose. And the purpose was because these lessons were going to strengthen me and give me the ability to uh, help others that may be walking the same path. And that gave me purpose. 
And it was just, it's been thrilling and exciting. Um, and so with that, I have entered into my own area of therapy. Um, and uh, I've just blossomed like a flower. <laughs> well, it shows in your face when yes. you talk about it. And I mean, yes. just so many people would like to just be sitting there saying, I want what she has, and I want that purpose in life and that feeling of forgiveness and, and that it's okay that my life was what it was and, and, and that's what's given me the yeah. character that I have today. Yeah. You must feel really good about this, Louie, about when these... Well, it's, you know, when she said blossom, mm -hmm. you know, you see so many people that come into the office and they are that flower, but they're like the tight bud, mm -hmm. you know, they just can't open because they're so worried about maybe what other people are going to say or, or what other people are going to think about them. And, and, and they, they are that, and, and as they start looking within themselves and seeing that they're okay, that you know they are like Claire said a child of God they were created in the image and in the likeness of God then you see that bud start opening a little bit and then it becomes what it was created to be the beautiful flower and not the bud and you know you could see it in Claire mm -hmm. and Claire projects that mm -hmm. to her people when she works with them uh, and when she speaks now and uh, uh, God had some purposes and plans for her. She just didn't know it yet. <laughs> no, I was too busy um, recreating the, the life that I kept saying I wanted to get rid of. Um, it takes more than one session. Uh, you people, you, you go in, you get hypnotized, and, and you leave, and you leave with what it was that you were supposed to leave with. But it's also a commitment that you're going to take time for yourself every day and you have a value and yes the children can wait five minutes the husband can wait you know every day I'm going to take so much time to find out about me uh, because until I find out who I am until I love myself forgive myself accept myself how can I do that uh, to you or to you or to you know my own family how can I give something that I don't have for me it's got to come from me first I have to have an abundance of it so that when I give it I'm not giving Depleting. myself yes. mm -hmm. right or giving it saying I'm giving this to you now I want to take something back right. um, and so every day is a day that you learn and so um, I, I do self-hypnosis um, and take 15 to 20 minutes a day to where I'm just silent and I get to hear uh, that voice within me uh, or that feeling, you know, sometimes you'll get a gut feeling. Well, that gut feeling is that innermost part of yourself saying, don't do that. It's not going to be good, but you get the gut feeling, you do it anyway, and you wonder why it didn't work out. And so you can't find it unless you take the time to do it. And that was a real lesson, too. Take time That's for me. Time. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness, how greedy, how selfish. <laughs> now it's like, time for me first, time for you second. <laughs> well... I think with player experience and what I believe that the Holy Spirit will never speak any louder than our willingness to listen. And if we're so caught up in all of this stuff of the world, we just don't take time to listen. And when you just kind of be like player said and just listen instead of chattering, you know, uh, you can hear the answers and the solutions. Something you mentioned to me before the program started about um, about the mail or how how did you would you go into that yeah. go, because it I'm was really that. interesting when she started telling me about that and you, know, you can sort of see how God works in some strange ways. Well, it was strange. Um, there was a lesson here for me you know it's like how did I end up with Louie? There's a lot of hypnotherapists out there. How did I end up with Louie? And it really was amazing because a man would be the last person I'd go to. Um, I had had some um, negative experiences along the way. And at that point in my life, it was like, I'll go to a female. She can understand my feelings, know what directions I'm coming from. And, um, and then there was a Louie. <laughs> and he made me, uh, he didn't make me do anything, but by observing him the times that I did, I saw a... Um, an emo uh, a, a soft side that you normally don't see in a man. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're out there, but not many. 
And so I was amazed at that. Mm -hmm. And so I kept observing and observing, and I wanted to see if he'd be consistent or if this was just something that he did for the audience. Mm -hmm. And the more I watched, the more consistent I knew that he was. And part of my learning from this whole experience was the fact that it was a man that uh, I was drawn to. So there was a, a rebuilding of a trust element. Uh, and there was also being able to observe men from a different point of view. There was some hardness that had developed in me over the years from different experiences. And I think a lot of women fall into that category. It's like, oh, no, I'm not going to get hurt again. Oh, no, I'm not going to set myself up that way yeah. again. And so you kind of start to view men in general uh, as, oh, they're all that way. And so it was a real um, learning experience for me that, no, um, men or women are not all that way and that you can find compassion and acceptance, uh, be it from a man or a woman. But I needed that lesson. I needed to take some of that hardness off mm -hmm. of me and to be able to look at men equally and with empathy mm -hmm. for the situations that were going on in their life, knowing that they could share that empathy back with me. And I think that if I'd have gone uh, to a female hypnotherapist, I wouldn't have learned that lesson. Probably not. No, I don't think I would have. So even to the way it was introduced to me, it was in a healing situation. How many uh, sessions did you have um, with, uh, with Dr. Bauer in hypnotherapy? We had two sessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, two the, sessions. Other than the one yeah, mm -hmm. from, the, yeah. from the workshop. Yeah. And, um, but the important thing is that you began to practice it in yourself, right? Um, studied hypnosis, and um, there's enough um, books out there about self-healing and spirituality. And I was just on a journey that I was going to find, not that I was going to find, I was going to allow what I had found in me to grow. It was like I had the spark, this hunger for life. It was like, at that moment, I chose to live. And sometimes you're not faced with that in life, but I had been faced with that before. And this time I chose to live, but I chose to live uh, a happy, prosperous life. I chose joy. Not just, you know, yeah, I want to live. Well, how do you want to live? Yeah. And I left there knowing that I was going to live a joyous, life and a peaceful life and that was my incentive um, to go out there and to let this feeling develop and so in order for it to develop I said I couldn't get a neck uh, I read books I talked to people I found out people that had similar interests similar experiences and I wanted to hear their stories anything that was on TV that had to do with uh, angel experiences mm -hmm. Uh, I couldn't get enough of that because to me it was becoming not a story, it was becoming truth. It was a different way of looking at life. And um, and so I decided that that was the way I wanted to, to live it. Mm -hmm. I think Claire made a choice instead mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, she made a choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, to be right or to be happy mm -hmm. yeah. or to be better or bitter. And she chose better. better. And, and we all have that choice to make. You know, do you really want to be better or do you want to remain mm -hmm. bitter and when you make the right choice then it's like miraculous things just come in and it happens and the right people the right place it all falls in it does it's we have free will it's never taken yes. away from us and we have you know the choice uh, and we bring to us I, I've, I've learned through this over the last year and a half that you know sometimes we'll sit back and we'll go well what is keep happening to me you know why why are these people in my life you know and it's because they're there to, to show you a lesson they're a mirror they're teaching you something you know it's like a wake-up call wake up sure. look at what's going on get uninvolved emotionally so that you can see what the lesson is and all of a sudden I started having different uh, different people who were involved in different things in life with different attitudes in life uh, starting to uh, be in my presence, you know, coming around in this circle. And so my friends changed. Um, 
you know, my family has changed. Um, everything's changed. And I really feel that because I was putting out this feeling of uh, the feeling that I had for myself, it was showing through me. So therefore, that's what I started to attract. And let your light shine before mm -hmm. men. Did and you say that? Yeah, keep the light <laughs> yeah, shining. Claire, the director's shine. giving us the cue. Okay. You've been a terrific guest. Thank you. Will you Thank come you. back again and I'd talk with it. us a little oh, more? Oh, great. Yeah. We'd love yeah, it. Like That'd be that good. Too. That'd be Thank super. You know. mm -hmm. Good. Thank you so much for coming, Claire. <laughs> Join us again for the healing power of the mind next month. Louis? Good.